So we know from the last chapter that global warming and climate change are issues that need to be tackled far and wide by citizens and countries alike. So reduction of greenhouse gases has got to happen. Uh, a couple of the solutions proposed in order to, pr to reduce 1 billion tons of the 9 billion tons that will be required, um, a, at least two of the solutions involved coal-fired power plants. So replacing coal-fired power plants with alternative energy sources, uh, which we'll be getting into in Chapter 6. And in Chapter 5, this current chapter, we're going to look at why coal-fired power plants um, put carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. How does a carbon coal-fired power plant work? Um, and so those are combustion reactions that we'll be looking at in this day. We burn fuels to heat or cool our homes, power our cities, and transport our vehicles. However, with over 7 billion people on Earth, demand for energy is increasing and is changing the chemistry of our atmosphere. But would it help if we could use cooking oil, sewage sludge, or animal fats as a fuel? would they produce fewer carbon dioxide emissions than fossil fuels? Biodiesel has already been used throughout the world to power cars, buses, and planes. It can be a very local fuel. We collect used cooking oil from around the city of Chicago. We turn it into fuel and a number of other products that all get sold right back into the community here in Chicago. Let's now explore fuels and find out what we can do to make them and their use more sustainable. Combustion reactions are important in our everyday lives. They are used to run our cars or provide electricity to our homes. So what are used in combustion reactions are fuels. That's what they all have in common is that something is burned and it provides energy uh, in the process. So fuels are burned in what are called combustion reactions and the, the large scale uh, generation of electricity happens at coal-fired power plants. So there are positive and negative consequences. Obviously, we, we need the electricity. Um, we need uh, we need gasoline for cars um, because we need transportation. But then there are negative consequences. We've already talked about air pollution and air pollutants coming from coal-fired power plants and nitrogen dioxide coming from uh, engine exhaust of cars. And so there's... Um, there's health and there's also the climate change caused by carbon dioxide. That's the main product of combustion reaction is carbon dioxide. So that's not an air pollutant, but it is contributing to global warming and climate change. And we need to figure out ways to cut that down. So there uh, was a mention of biofuels in that intro video. And uh, we'll be getting into alternative fuels for cars, as well as alternative cars in a future chapter. The majority of fuels that are used in cars or in generating electricity for the grid are fossil fuels that are um, pumped from underground uh, that we talked about in the carbon cycle. So oil, petroleum, methane gas, coal. This is all uh, meant to be stored underground, but we've pumped underground and have been burning fossil fuels uh, fuels in combustion reactions. What you see here is wood. So wood is a uh, not pumped from underground, but it is a combustion reaction. So what all combustion reactions have in common is that they are something burning, uh, generally heat and light are produced. And so we take advantage of the heat in combustion reactions to generate electricity, and we'll be seeing that. So the combustion reactions always have a fuel and some oxidizer, generally going to be oxygen from the atmosphere, and produce heat, energy. Uh, in general, they're hydrocarbons. Um, so paper, wood, candles. Uh, the Bunsen burner in the lab is methane gas. That's natural gas, but there's jet fuel and diesel fuel. They all have in common that they are hydrocarbons. As we've seen before, uh, hydrocarbons contain only carbon and hydrogen. And when we're talking about alkane hydrocarbons, there are only single bonds between the carbons and between the carbons to the hydrogens. So this is uh, showing the way to determine or calculate how many hydrogens 
when you're given the number of carbons. And so you're given the number of carbons from the prefix. So there's uh, mother eats peanut butter. Those are the first four prefixes in the hydrocarbons. That stands for one, two, three, and four. And so this is the um, shown for four carbons is butane. So but, mother eats peanut butter, that's number four. And uh, this A-N-E indicates, the A-N-E ending of butane indicates that it is an alkane. There are all single bonds between the carbons and between the carbons to the hydrogens. So you can calculate when you have alkanes, uh, when you're given the number of carbons, you can calculate how many hydrogens, which is take that number of carbons, multiply times two, and add two. So if you have four carbons, that will be 2 times 4 plus 2, or 10 hydrogens. So C4H10 would be the chemical formula for all of these are representations of butane, C4H10. In these repre representations of butane, this is the structural formula. The structural formula is the Lewis structure. That shows the atoms and how they're bonded. This is another version of the Lewis structure or the structural formula. This is actually showing a little bit of rotation around each carbon. It's a zigzag line, which is what we'll get to uh, is the short the shortcut way, which is called the line angle drawing. This is uh, what this molecule with all those C's and H's, we can break it down to this, which is just this, this zigzag line represents C4H10. This this um, chemical formula, but in a different way where it's shown what's bonded at each carbon. So instead of just C4H10, you have the different carbon groups, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. And this is called the condensed, the condensed formula. So the condensed structural formula, because it tells you a little bit about the structure, that those are, are indiv individual carbon groupings, um, but it's condensed, but not so much as that it's just C4H, C4H10. Reactions always feature a fuel, something being burned, and oxygen, the oxidizer. So oxygen gas from the atmosphere typically. And these are always going to be on the left side. So one thing all combustion reactions have always in common is O2. That's O2, the diatomic uh, oxygen gas, and that's on the left side of the reaction arrow. It's a reactant uh, if it's on the left side. And so for hydrocarbons, anytime you have the alkene hydrocarbons, which is only carbon and hydrogens, the products are always going to be the same. It's always going to be carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O. Those are on the product side. That's the right side of the reaction arrow. So when you are given a uh, hydrocarbon fuel, like butane, C4H10, you can generate the rest of the reaction because you have the, when you're given the butane, C4H10, you always know that O2 will be on the reactant side. And then on the right side, you can draw an arrow and then put CO2 and H2O. These, the 2, the 13, the 8, and the 10 are coefficients that are added to balance the equation. So that's to make the numbers of atoms equal on both sides. So in balancing this equation, we'll get into this in the next worksheet, the numbers of carbons are equal on both sides. These get to be larger numbers than you're used to, but there's eight carbons and eight carbons. There's 20 hydrogens, this is two times 10, and 10 times two, 20 hydrogens on the right side. And then there's 13 times two, 26 oxygens on the left side, on the reactant side, and on the the product side, you actually have to add the oxygens, so this is 8 times 2, or 16 oxygens coming from CO2, and then 10 oxygens coming from H2O. So 16 plus 10 is 26 oxygens on the right side, and there were 13 times 2, 26 oxygens on the left side. The uh, actual combustion of this butane isn't actually as simple as this. There are uh, side reactions that happen, which is what we talked about for coal-fired power plants. Some side reactions that produce sulfur dioxide or nitrogen dioxide that's produced in gasoline combustion. And we'll be, uh, we, we had talked about that. That's how we get nitrogen oxide um, when nitrogen from the atmosphere also reacts because there's high temperatures.